Hello, I'm Justin, and I'm going to be showing you how to design things. We're going to be starting with designing monsters. When designing a monster, you don't just want to come up with something that looks cool. You want to come up with something that both follows the rules of anatomy and also lives in its world and makes it interesting. Now, when designing something, let's see right here, I came up with a set of terms. Hive, walking, defender, desert, and poison. Those are my terms to describe my creature. Before I start working, I'm going to say that it's going to be an insect, so I did my research. I started looking around for things. It's like, well, this has a shiny shell used to reflect the heat in the desert. This ant creates honey inside of itself to take back to the hive. This creature has a compound eye, lots of eyes to see in lots of different directions. Each one of these have segmented armor so that they can move but be very strong. Now, ants are designed to spread out their weight across the six joints so that they can be very, very strong when lifting things. Segmented armor again, offensive, but mine's purely a defensive creature. This one is designed to carry a lot of weight, but it's also got wings for flying, but I like how it's stretched out. Now I take those same terms, and I came through and designed this. I created a cre creature that had a hive. I flattened the honey pieces out so they wouldn't seem similar. I made a fake back end so that its front end would actually be the back end. This is the front end, and she walks this direction. The idea was that if you came to the hive, you'd be the insect or animal would be confused and think this is the front side and coming from this side. These are the wings that go across the top. They're made of that same shiny material that we see here. Now, the hive's protected in here as the wings are sharp, have sharp pieces sticking out of them, but also the wings can be opened up and flapped to make air to cool down the hive. Now, what I've done is I've stretched her out and I've put one, two of her legs on the ground to kind of drag her forwards now, on the head, I've used a compound eye, but I've split her head into a triangle, kind of a Y, so that she can see towards the way she's going, but she can also see behind herself in quite a large section of vision. Now, these arms, these are a seeming kind of hollow tube that grows this kind of toxic poison from what it eats. It eats other uh, plants, and it uses those to create poison. And what it does is it has these bags back here, they're tubes, and these are the muscles. It can constrict them very quickly, pushing this air out of this way. And so the particles that are here, it can scatter them out like a cloud, giving it kind of two shots to be able to create a poison cloud that if intaken kind of causes hallucinations or makes other animals ill. Now she walks this way, protecting her hive through the desert, and this gives me a unique animal that doesn't normally exist. Now just like the design project like we've talked about before, whenever you're designing anything, you need to start with your problem, then you need to go to your research, and make sure you don't just research things that you know. Try to find things that are interesting and new. Once I've got my research, then what I do is I come up with an idea, and this isn't the best possible idea. This is just one of them. I'm going to design lots and lots of them. That's called iteration. I'm going to make lots and lots of monsters to see which ones look just the very best. And then once I've designed, um, you know, a hundred or so of these, I'm going to take all the most interesting ones and I'm going to combine them into one or two really, really interesting ones, taking all the best features. Then that'll be my solution to my problem. And if I want it to be more interesting, I take it back into my design process and I put it back together. Now I'm going to show you how to do this with an animal. We're going to go through and I'm going to say that I need an animal and I need it to have a couple of different things. I'm going to say that I want it to be in a cold climate. I want it to be able to, it needs a way to eat, get food. And I'm going to say that it takes ice and it draws the water out of it. So I'm going to say heats up ice to get water. I'm going to say, how does it move? Well, if I were a thing that, I'm going to say that it's, maybe a small, like a squirrel size. And I'm going to say that it probably needs to stay hidden, but it needs to move somehow. And I'm going to say that it kind of moves kind of like a squid, because you want to stay kind of flat so that you can have a snow-colored top and you can actually be able to eat what you're dealing with on top. Now, you drink water, but you've got to eat something. And I'm going to say that if you dig down into ice, there are these little bitty things, these ice worms. It's interesting because if you take the ice worm and you take it to a warmer climate than freezing, the worm falls apart. It's a strange creature. So it eats these ice worms and it's going to need some type of mouth. And if I'm going to eat an ice worm, 
I probably don't need a lot of stuff to, I can probably just heat it up. I probably don't need teeth. So I'm just going to say it's going to be an opening for the mouth. But I'm going to say, how does it get those worms that are so deep down there? Well, I'm going to say that it's got specialized suction or, let's see, something that reaches for them. How about some sort of digging claw, digging like scoop? Instead of the claws coming out like this, I'm going to say that they grow together to create these kind of like horse scoops for the hands. And let's see, go in and we'll say, how does it defend against predators? Well, it's probably really good at digging, but see, it, hmm, that's a good reason. Something really interesting to make it fun. See, let's say it gets along with another creature that's there, and that creature drops dung and other things that it eats. This creature also cleans that of parasites. So I'm going to say that it's got a way to entice another creature to let it come with it. So I'm going to say that it actually can develop, uh, maybe its waste is some sort of like flavorful, uh, I don't know, kind of a honey. Let's say that it drops some honey. And that attracts another creature that's larger, and it can ride with that creature, like pulling onto its hair or something like that, so it can climb with it, clean it of parasites, and they have a kind of mutual relationship whenever they're not together. Now I'm going to try to create an animal that is interesting and unique. Now I'm going to say that I've got a common squirrel, and so I'm just going to start with a... Study some anatomy in a minute. I'm just going to draw it with shapes. See, it's got a kind of a head, and I'm going to say tail. Now, I need a way to hear things coming. Ears don't have to necessarily just be circles to be ears. I'm going to say that it's going to, because it wants to be able to lay flat, I'm going to give it like cat ears, but I'm going to put the ears together, and I'm going to make them run down the, sa the side of their body. So, kind of like this. I'm going to say it needs to be able to see, but I don't necessarily need two eyes together to be able to see. That gives me a lot of depth perception, but this thing really is hunting for small, you know, insects on the that are underneath the ground. So, I'm going to say that, not only does this help it scoop a little bit with its head, I'm going to say that its eyes face straight down and I'm gonna put them on its hands just because the idea of putting them there is a place they're not normally are and now a lot of things have this thing called cephalization I can tell the difference between this is a human head it's got space it's called good cephalization if I have a worm Worms have poor cephalization because I can't see the difference between the head. I'm going to say that this creature has poor cephalization because its skin just goes down to cover it. I'm going to say that it needs to melt snow to get water. I'm going to say that it does that on the top of its body. It's got a fur, and what the fur does is the fur has kind of like these little hooks that are really small in it. And so whenever it rolls over, it collects snow in these pieces, and as it gets close to its body, it starts to warm it up and so the snow becomes water and it absorbs it through its skin which can have a very porous skin and so I'm gonna give this thing just a little bit of fur and I'm gonna because I've got a point up here I'm gonna put a point down here and I'm going to take the legs and I'm gonna say to lay out really flat I'm gonna connect the legs kinda of like a flying squirrel to the tail and I've got these type of feet, so I'm going to say that kind of like a rabbit or a cat, they're kind of can be pushed in. Or try to draw everything you can with. See, I'm drawing with outlines to be really quick, but whenever you get into it, you need to draw everything with shapes. Shapes will really help you make sense of the world. Gonna make him like a fluffy starfish. Move that hand. I don't know 
if I want the eyes to be that close to the front because that can cause a problem with kicking stuff up into the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say there's like a little mouth thing that can close so when it's digging it can close and cover the eye. And it needs a way to breathe and I'm going to say that it's got several openings like this there for its body Come together and I'm going to say that the snow is on top so it sits kind of like this so that whenever you see it when it's laying down flat whenever it sees a predator all you see is white because the snow's on top of its fur and for a mouth I'm going to say that it opens up sideways separates the fur and inside it's just got like a an esophagus that it can just push things in and it just digests them and since it's the worm and other parasites inside it it just has acid as it goes through its internal organs and you don't need an incredibly strong acid lemon juice will digest things and I'm gonna put hands on the feet eyes on the feet and I'm gonna say that we're getting a pretty interesting animal and if you ever don't know where to go, just start by, make sure you have a list of things so that you're not just doing art. Art is something you can get better at. It's not just whatever you want it to be. It's a set of scientific rules that make up how the world exists. Now, I'm going to follow the, the design method. I've got my problems, but now I'm going to say, instead of these problems, I'm going to say I want to make a unique animal. I'm going to start with a dog, and this is the artist's method. Why, it still will create a unique animal. So I've got a dog, and let's see, like a corgi. Try to draw everything with shapes that you can because it makes it very easy to fix things later, and it makes it very easy to shade them. Wolf tail, eyeball, ear. All right, very lazy dog. All right, now what I'm going to say is I'm going to add another animal to him. I'm going to say that I'm going to add a snail. And I'm going to say that snail shell. And then I'm going to say that what I want to do is I want to make his head more like a shark. And I'm going to give him a dolphin tail, like a sharky tuna fish tail. And I'm going to say that for hands, I'm going to use, oh, let's see, kind of like a Oh, like a, what do you call them, sloth hands. Let's say that they're like two-sided pinchers. Face these backwards. Now I'm going to say that I'm going to take these ears off. Move this shell forwards, just doing a little art, just making things look good. And I'm going to say, take this piece off here, this back tail, and I'm going to make it more of a elongated tail. I'm going to bring the shell back, segment it kind of like an ant, and I'm going to say, uh, let's take this guy and let's make him more like a shark or like a hammerhead shark. Let's pull his eyes out. Now let's see. Let's take his 
back legs and let's make them where they can fold into his body. So kind of like a fin to where whenever he gets close he can just move it into himself. And I'm going to say that I'm going to take him kind of like a narwhal and give him a horn going forwards. And same thing with his bottom jaw. I'm going to make the horn go down. And I'm going to move these arms and I'm going to make them come together to hold things. So kind of like this. And let's see, let's make this snail shell not so obvious of a snail shell. Spikes are the lazy man not being creative. It's very easy to cover a thing with spikes and make it look cool. Okay, you can see how you can basically art up a creature to make something new. I mean, you can continuously adjust and play around until you get something new, which is a really good idea in the iteration phase. Once you've come up with something that matches all your ideas, then it's a really fun thing to do to just play around until you get something completely unique. But don't start like this. Make sure you start with design in mind. Make sure you come up with something that's interesting, that's not just a random art pieces. Okay, I hope this helps with monster design. Have a good day.